Hello, hi guys, good morning. And in this question, we will see in this video, we will see uh, the question that we are given a 2D integer array nums1 and nums2. So the nums1 uh, has id and a value, nums2 has an id and a value. So each array contains unique IDs. So the IDs are unique and are in ascending order by the ID. Okay. Now we have to merge these two arrays into one sorted ascending order array ID by array ID. Uh, now how to uh, basically merge these two arrays? Only ID that appear in at least one of the two arrays should be included in the resulting array. So which means that the IDs cannot be repetitive and uh, each id should be included only once and its value should be the sum of the values of its id in the two arrays so uh, it's pretty simple the constraints are pretty small any brute force solution will work for you guys uh, it's just that if this is a array one two uh, two three four five and i have another array one four uh, three two and four one so the first basic approach which comes to our mind is that okay i'll just store in a map for every corresponding key i'll store a value okay what's the value in that so for that key i'll store a value uh if it is one the value is two if it is two value is three if it is four value is five and then i can just iterate on this i did on this and made this array which is right here then i can just iterate on this array and just try adding the values back in that so map which is one i added it's already in the map so i just added and a four uh three will come here just here and the value will be two four is already in the map so i can just add a one so as let's say it is n it is m so it's just that o of n plus m log of n plus m kind of complexity if you use a map and as we are storing the keys in the sorted order so we use we use we need to use an um, ordered map or simple map we can't use an unordered map if we want we can also use an unordered map but still it will still go to that complexity and it's good to have this in sorted order so one thing we are for sure that okay it's the one brute force solution which we can opt to take or another very easy and a very good solution would be not using memory not using any extra time like not using extra map another map no extra memory at all uh, it's just that what we can use do is that we can use two pointers i and j i pointer points here j pointer points here and as we know that this is a sorting according to my ids so basically it is sorted according to my these ids so what I can simply do is that, okay, I can just iterate on this N and M simultaneously and see if my IDs are same, then let's say it is my final array. If my IDs are same, okay, I will just have that ID and I can just do addition of these two values, which is two plus four. Then I can just move both of them ahead, which is J here and I here. Now I will see, okay, uh, which is less i or j which means that this id is less right so and it is not equal so i can i can't just add in both the values so if it is i is less so i just need to add a i here and i can just move my i ahead now id of i and id of j id of j is less so i can just add an id of j and i can move my j ahead and as I see that, okay, both IDs are same. So I can just have the same ID. I can just add those values, which is five plus one. And I can just using these two pointers, I can just return my final vector, 2D vector, you can say. With this, you can easily see that I, I didn't use any extra space other than this space to make this array, which is O of N. But I didn't use an extra space to store some elements or to store the values which, which I might have used if, if I have used an ordered map or map. And in map itself, the complexity would have increased to O of n plus m log n plus m. Here the complexity is just O of n plus m. And we are good to go. Now let's quickly see the code. Uh, here what we just took is I took an answer array. I took my n and a m. Uh, I initialized my i and j pointer by zeros. I just move my i until I reach my n. I move my j until I reach my m. And as soon as I move, I compare both i and j IDs if they are same. If the IDs are same, 
then I can just have this ID. This is ID and this is the value, which is the sum, right? And this I, and this I will increase my I and a J. I am good with that. After that, uh, if I have my number, which is nums one of I, if it is less, which means my I ID is less than my J ID, then I will just push back my I ID. It is the ID and it is the value as my id of num1 is less else my id of num2 will be less so it will be id and a value and i can just move on doing this whole thing until my i is less than m and my j is also less than m let's say my i reached to a position n which means my i is finished my i has reached to a land but my j has not so this loop will break down but my j was still not completed right so i'll complete my j here and Elsewise, like vice versa, if my J was at the end, but my I was not completed. So I'll just complete my I here. So when this loop is done, I'll just complete my I and my J and yeah, I'm good to go. So I hope that you guys like the video. If you want to see the next video, which was the next question, which was pretty good. You can just watch and see. I'll just put it in the end screen or in the cards as well. See you guys in the video. Goodbye. Bye.